Welcome, everyone. Today we have Lauren Gruski from Permission.io joining us behind the scenes. We were just chatting about ring lights. Uh, for those who are listening in and can't see her glow, she is lighting up the room. Lauren, it's an honor to have you with us today. Um, I always like to start, I'll do a, an intro for you beforehand, but give us your sort of background, your description of who you are, what you're up to, um, and, and how you got into Web3. Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Carly. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, quick background on me. I have a background in media, technology, advertising, and now I can add Web3 to that list as well. So I've um, had a spent my career in the media industry from big platforms at Viacom on the Nickelodeon portfolio to um, Vivo, which is a music platform. I was there when they first got off the ground to Roblox, which now we all are very well aware of what Roblox is in Web3. I spent about seven years at Facebook building their technology vertical on the consumer and then scaled their B2B globally. I ran my own company for a few years, and now I'm at Permission.io um, leading teams there around growing our business and supporting brands and advertisers in the industry to leverage our technology to grow their business. That and when I'm not working, oh, I'm sorry, Carly, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, um, go for it. I, I'm just taking a moment so everyone can soak it all in. I mean, giant, giant companies, like a lot of them are dream companies too. So it's, I'm excited to hear the rest of your story. Yeah, awesome. Well, I say I'm, you know, I've just been fortunate to have the opportunity to work and contribute to these companies. And what's most important to me in my career is learn. And I continue to learn, I continue to grow, and I think we're always learning in everything we do. So I'm really excited about what Web3 presents just as the new frontier of technology and how consumers will interact and own and have sovereignty in the world of the internet. So I'm really excited about that um, and the opportunities that it presents for so many underserved communities. So that's really exciting to me. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to dive in with you today and talk a bit about Web3 and women in Web3 and really just the whole economy around it as well. Yeah. How did you first learn about it and hear about it? And I'm curious, how did you seek out permission.io? Were you, is it just permission or permission.io? It's either. We call it's it either. both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did they come after you? I mean, after coming from Nickelodeon and Roblox and then Facebook, um, what was it like? Did you join as they were kind of a smaller startup and talk about those transitions and, and that path? Yeah, great. I can definitely talk about it. And hopefully your listeners can also, if anyone's out there in this moment thinking about how I get into Web3 or how you make a career change, I mean, I think there's always, we can always learn from everyone's experience. So um, I had been running my own business and consulting uh, business as well, sort of two-pronged in the way I ran my business. And I started getting a lot of work around things that encompass blockchain technology. So that could be anything from the metaverse, but also how the crypto economy was starting to become more fintech and starting to become a more acceptable payment methodology. And um, so as crypto was becoming more mainstream, it also was starting to intersect into e-commerce. And so I, I just did an, a bunch of work in sectors where this Web3 world was starting to actually really take hold. And so I got curious and learned myself about what interested me in the space. And as a product of that, I really see the opportunity in a couple of ways in, in Web3 and what I wanted to do next is one, in a world where consumers get to have sovereignty over their time, data, and attention. And two, over money as a technology. And I think we're moving to a world in the world that I see is a world where everyone has access to currency. Everyone has access to the ability to um, pay and earn beyond just having to go through a fiat currency or for it to be controlled by banks. Um, while I'm a proponent for regulation, I think that there is a space where we're going to start to transact in new ways through the blockchain. Um, that will revolutionize what's possible for us all to continue to grow and evolve as a as a um, as an economy and as a species, quite frankly. So through that interest, as I was making the decision to um, come back into working with organizations and to come back into the world, kind of like post COVID, um, into a working world, I was exploring companies that fit 
the um, aspects that were most interesting to me. And so I came across the founder, Charlie, who I think is just a brilliant man when it comes to his vision for, um, for how consumers interact and how advertisers can actually collaborate with consumers and using tokenized rewards as a means of exchange. Um, and the opportunity was really unique to come in and to actually facilitate discussions with brands and CEOs and, and agencies that are looking to drive innovation and meet consumers where they are through the Web3 economy. That's incredible. I want to back up. You said you started learning about the space and which parts of it lit you up and that you were most excited about. Can you tell us some of those ways that you started learning? Like, did you listen to podcasts or just go on Decrypt or, or you know, one of yeah. the crypto news sites and just dive in? What were your ways to kind of get up to speed on all the lingo and how yeah. it applies to it's your a, industry? It's a great question. I think first and foremost is just having targeted research. So allowing myself to understand what it is that I'm looking to learn. So first and foremost is like allowing myself one to be clear around like, okay, what is metaverse, for example, and then what are the key tenets of it beyond what's on the surface level? So as a user, we see it as this place where we can meet in the digital land and we don't have to physically see each other, but we can still connect through our avatars or through experiences and that sort of thing. But then I got curious around like, well, what else is actually made up of the metaverse? Like what has to be done to get us there, right? Like what's the infrastructure? What's the technology? What's the hardware? So I started to look at it beyond just a consumer lens, but also as like, what is the investment and the collaboration that has to happen in the industry in order for this to actually come to life? So I'm sharing that example because there's depending upon who you read or who you follow, it's going to inform what information you consume. And so I always do it with a lens of like, what am I trying to learn and allow that to be my starting point. Um, I use the metaverse just as an example, because a lot of people think of metaverse when they think Web3. Now, in terms of the cryptocurrency space, one thing that I think is really important in addition to learning is to participate. Because when we participate and we put skin in the game, we naturally become interested in it. So I opened up a couple of different crypto wallets. I started investing in cryptocurrencies and learning about like what they are. Um, I read five different books around cryptocurrencies that were like super thick. I mean, I read and did Audible to be fair. Um, but I <laughs> just that got, still counts. <laughs> yeah, like I just got curious around like, you know, what is Bitcoin and why was it started and where is it today and what is Ethereum and how does that actually change the game and invite more participants into the space? And so sometimes it's like, what is? Sometimes it's participating ourselves. Um, sometimes it's reading books, listening. I mean, there's a myriad of ways I, I sort of immerse myself. But the I'll say the last pieces as well is like, it's very easy to think like, wow, there's so much to learn. I'm so far behind. And I had to also shift my mentality coming into this space. I actually learned this at Facebook, grew through this at Facebook of like, there were so many updates all the time to all the platforms and the products and, and we just will never know it all. And so to know and to have the knowing in me that I'm resourceful, that's my mantra. I'm resourceful and I'll go find whatever information it is that I need. And it's okay to say, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll go find it for me, for you, or I'll connect you to someone who can be a better resource. I love that. That's such great advice. And it's also permission, which I feel like a lot of people in the space, whether you're just reading about it, looking to get into it, or you're building in it, especially, it's like, you need that permission slip to be able to turn off because it's like, if you're not building at a million miles a minute, or you're not up all night reading on the latest thing, it's like, how can you keep up? But per your point, like, you'll never, it's accepting that you'll never be able to keep up on every single like company or news item or product update. I saw that when writing my women in web three newsletter in the beginning, they were like, so long, and I wouldn't include everything. And then I was like, very quickly, seeing that the people in this space do not sleep. <laughs> and it is just like, there's endless information nowadays. Yeah. You know, I think it comes down to a life choice. Like what is the life experience that we want to have? Because 
we sort of create habits and ways of being that become habitual. And so for me, it's been a life choice for me. Like I want to live in peace. I want to be a leader who people have access to, who's open, who's calm, who's like, I don't want to be on the anxiety train. And that's a life choice. And also to recognize in myself, like, okay, maybe I should go walk the dog for 20 minutes because I'm getting a little addicted to something or I'm like, you know, I'm trying to learn something that I need to take a break or I'm getting overworked, uh, overwhelmed about something that came across my plate or something that's worrying me. And I think just web three or any industry that we're in or anything that we're up to in our lives, like we have to make choices about who we want to be and how we want to show up. And so that's more my North Star around my learning and discovery mode than it is to know it all and to be ahead of anyone else. Like, I'm okay. I'm perfectly okay right where I am. And I'll be led to whatever's next and best for me and for those that I work with. I love that. And did you feel like your learning and discovery and your immersion kind of help with the risk aspect? I know a lot of people, they talk about it, especially in terms of women who, you know, might not quote, traditionally handle finances and whatnot, feel a little like averse to web three because it seems so risky and it seems so new. Um, so did, did doing all of that research kind of help counterbalance the feeling of like, yeah, I'm going to dive in now, even if we're still on the early side. Look, we're still on the early side and I see it as an opportunity. I It's interesting, like I see that we're at the kindergarten preschool phases of what is going to be built for the future. So it's all about perspective for me. I'm excited to develop relationships in this industry with people who everyone is learning and everyone wants Web3 to happen. So there's an energy in the whole uh, industry around Web3 where people want to help each other. It's not like Facebook versus Google mentality. That was That's very real and exists. This is very much like, wow, I was just at a conference last week and while there was, I was speaking with someone, a potential partner, and while there was no opportunity, we were both like, hey, but you know, there's three other people I could introduce you to that could help you with what you're trying to solve and what you're up to. And I think that is the energy that's taking place in this space. So if you have a question of like, oh, I don't know enough, or I should be learning more, use that as fuel to say, I'm going to go in with a growth mentality. I'm going to always be learning. And I'm going to, I'm going to also have something to contribute to this space because the still key tenets of marketing exist. If you're a marketer, that doesn't change. And in fact, the web three groupies or, or a community or whatever you want to call them. Some Web3 people call them DGENs. I mean, there's so many names for how you want to describe Web3 communities right now, but they also are open to disciplines that they might not have. And so I think allowing yourself to see, like, I have value, I have experience to contribute and to know that that's going to be received well, while also you learn from people that have experience and value to contribute on the Web3 side. But we're going to grow up into all of this together. And I can't wait till the days where we look back five years from now and say, oh my gosh, can you believe what we were building five years ago? We're so far beyond that now. We've learned so much. And now is the time to come in and to like learn the ABCs because we'll be putting words together and then sentences together and then paragraphs and then writing books. And we're still in the ABC phase. And so I would say, you know, definitely do not be intimidated and know that you come with unique experience and value that can help facilitate the growth of Web3. It's crazy when, when you put it that way, thinking how, you know, we're, we're in the ABC phase, but how quickly it, it, we likely will be to write writing the book. I mean, I think back to, I'm like, wow, my parents didn't even have like, I don't think I might be aging them more so than they are, but I'm like, I don't even know if they had color TV when they were kids. I'm Maybe like, let not. alone cell phones. So it's like the the speed at which this technology can it can innovate on itself if we do it together is is so rapid. And I've definitely seen the same thing in that it's it's such a different mentality than web two, if you will, where everyone's kind of like siloed into their own company and trying to get ahead. It feels very collaborative. 
uh, which is really special. And I don't know if that will last, but I hope it does. It's a cool, cool aspect. Um, I know you guys currently are, you partner with a, a ton of different people, both in Web3 and outside of it, like Google Cloud and Google Ads app permission. Um, I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the, the partnerships and the collaborations that you guys are doing. And if we want to dive into, you know, for the listeners, what permission is doing that they might be able to get involved in um, yeah. as a user side, like with our data, how does that apply? Or, you know, they are a marketer or what, what do they need to know about what you're building? Yeah, great. So first and foremost, I'll just explain the background of permission and then how we work for users slash consumers and then how we also work with advertisers and brands. So Permission was designed with the whole idea of that brands and advertisers and anyone for that matter that wants access to your data, your time, or your attention need to ask permission for it. And we need to have transparency around it. And so we have a native token. It's a utility token that is called ASK, ask, again, intentionally ask permission to the consumer. And so we leverage the token as a way to reward users for their time, attention, and data in a myriad of ways. You could think of all the ways that a consumer would share something with either an advertiser or um, a brand or a company that's looking to add value to them by collecting their data. And so that's sort of the background around our token. I will say we have done a ton of work around compliance and being recognized as a utility token by the regulatory bodies that exist in cryptocurrency today. So we're really proud of all of the work we've done to substantiate the longevity of our token. Um, and we're heavily compliance focused. So I can't say that enough. Um, it's really important in the crypto space that you, there's a focus on that. And then in terms of the work that we do with advertisers and brands is we enable brands to reach Web3 audiences that they can't reach anywhere else. And so we, and if you're, whether you're in the crypto space, you're an exchange or a wallet or an issuer, and you're looking to drive user acquisition and growth, we enable you to do that. Um, whether you're an e-commerce company that's looking to drive sales, we enable you to reach the individuals that are most likely to buy your product, and in some cases, we reward them with our token so we can integrate tokenized rewards into it. We also can integrate NFTs. Um, but there's a number of use cases that we enable with our platform, our advertising platform. So we do have a partnership with the world's largest publishers. We have access to inventory in-app and in the digital web. And so we run targeted advertising and um, advertisers can do it just directly leveraging our audience data where users have opted in to receive ads. So they're a highly relevant audience that's interested in hearing from you. Um, and then we also have tokenized rewards where we can reward users for actions they may take with an advertiser or with a brand. And look, we're seeing incredible results. On average, just in terms of cost, advertisers care a lot about efficiency of their media we're usually anywhere between three to seven uh, X more efficient than their next um, advertising channel. We're really excited about the value that that produces for our advertisers and the money we put back in their pockets by advertising with us. And then when we use our tokenized rewards, as you can imagine, they're capturing zero party data from a user, which we can't even really put a price tag on that because it's so valuable right now with all the data signal loss that's taking place in the industry. Um, but they're also developing a relationship with the consumer where this may be the first time that user ever gets cryptocurrency and it's coming from a brand or their first NFT and we're driving them to a metaverse experience. And so beyond just the results that we're driving for advertisers, we're also deepening the relationships that they have with their consumers, which it's always been important to do. But especially now as we move into Web3, it's a must because these communities are so Either they're going to accelerate your brand or they're quick to react and it may have adverse reactions to your brand. So, yeah, we're really excited about the value that we provide to the consumer and earning from their time, attention and data. And then also for advertisers and brands in driving their business outcomes and deepening the relationships with consumers. I love the transparency and ownership that you guys are are utilizing and focusing on. And I think they're such important pillars of Web3. But I feel like it's also like at the same time as 
all of us, like me included, newbies and, and people to the space need to learn about Web3. I feel like it's also, we're in this movement of learning about what our data is and how much of it sure. is out there and like how to even take control of it. Growing up, you know, if we, we started with like MySpace and Facebook and they always said like, don't put anything that you don't want on your college applications or whatever your first job to see on there. And you just were kind of like, okay. But nowadays, if you think about the amount of data that is, is, you know, compiled from everything that we use our phones for everything we're online for, it's constantly like little bits of ourselves and our preferences that are getting stacked up. Um, I think what you guys are are doing to help people empower them to see, okay, I have all of this data that is just being taken. I can own it and then decide like, do I want to share it or do I not? Um, I think that's so important and hopefully will open up some eyes too, to, to people just about what's going on in the data and privacy sphere. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's, you know, data capture that's in favor of the consumer. So in our case, our native token, it can be exchanged on the major exchanges for other cryptocurrencies, it can be used as a payment method, it's an ERC 20 standard token. So for the 30% of businesses that accept cryptocurrency, you can convert that into a payment method. And convert it into fiat currency. Like, so it's also about not just saying, okay, well, you know, we have access to our data, so you get free use to our platform, which is one model. But I think the consumer expectation has grown beyond that. And so while that used to work in the past, the consumer expectation is expanding. And so we have to meet the consumer where they are and give them what they want. Yeah. Lauren, this has been I- incredible. Is there anything else? that you want to add before we we get your socials and where people can follow along? Yeah, I think the last piece I would say is just, and maybe this is going to translate into um, our our moving to my socials and where they can find me, but my door is always open. So if you're curious about making a transition into Web3 or you want to just network and deepen a relationship, I love that. So please feel free, send me a DM on LinkedIn or on Twitter or wherever it is that your preferred method is, it, you can email me directly. Um, but I'll always have time to set up, you know, 15, 30 minutes to meet each other. And I welcome that. So I just want to make sure everyone feels like my door is always open and I'm excited to continue to meet people in this space and those that are excited to get in it. Amazing. And where can people go and follow you and permission? You can speak it out loud and I'll be sure to put it in the show notes for everyone too. Yeah, great. So permission is permission.io on all of our handles across every single platform. Mine is really unique. It's just Lauren Gruski, my first and last name. So at Lauren Gruski on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, that's typically where you'll find me and where I'll always answer my DMs. Um, And then of course, my email is just my first and last name at Gmail. You can reach me there or my permission email is Lauren at permission. Um, Really any way of your preferred methods is fine. Lauren, you are awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. You too, Carly. My pleasure.